I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor and your great mercy. Answer me, O God, with your salvation that never ends. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We begin our celebration today. Let's just take a moment of quiet reflection. Look in our daily lives to those moments of grace and give God thanks for his gift. Let's seek God's forgiveness for our own sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners to redemption. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Loving God, who reward the merits of the just and offer pardon to sinners who do penance, have mercy, we pray, on those who call upon you, that the admission of our guilt may serve to obtain your pardon for our sins. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated, listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I answer you. On the day of salvation, I help you. And I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to restore the land and allot the desolate heritages. Saying to the prisoners, come out. To those in darkness, show yourself. Along the way, they shall find pasture. On every bare height shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them, for he pities them and leads them and guides them beside springs of water. I will cut a road through all my mountains and make my highways level. See, some shall come from afar, afar, others from the north and the west, some from the land of Syene. Sing, oh, sing out, O oh heavens, and rejoice, O oh earth. Bring forth into song your mountains, for the Lord confronts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child in her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. The word of the Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness. The Lord is good to all and, in, and compassionate toward all of his works. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is faithful in all his works, the holy and holy in all his work, works. The Lord, the Lord lifts up all who are fallen and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is just in all his ways, the holy in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him and all who call upon him in truth. The Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the salvation and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus answered the Jews. My father is at work until now, so I am at work. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. 
Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For what the Father does, the Son will do also. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you may be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also does the Son give life to whomever he wishes. Nor does the Father judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tomb will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but to those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. I have friends in Chicago who had uh, have a family with four sons, um, and uh, we've been friends a long time, going back to when the the guys who are now adults, uh, adults were just little guys like this, and uh, uh, both their parents are accountants. Uh, uh, mom was a a uh, senior audit manager with um, Pricewaterhouse, I think. Dad was uh, both an attorney and an account, handled nonprofit uh, things for Arthur Anderson. Um, uh, both worked long hours in general. Um, and when Tom would uh, come home, uh, there were days he just wanted to collapse and relax. And he would plop down on, on the couch and pull the clicker and then invariably hit ESPN, uh, unless there was a ball game or something on a local station. Then he might turn that on, but it would be there. And uh, the, at this time, there were just two boys in the family. Uh, Steve and Greg. And uh, they would come in and they'd be all excited that dad's home and we're going to go out and play and then they would just see Tom sitting there looking at the, the TV screen with a sword on. And rather than get disappointed, these two would march upstairs to their room and they would pick out sporting equipment for the, whatever the sport was that he was watching. So it was a football game. I would go helmets and shoulder pads and footballs. It was baseball, they'd put on their baseball caps and grab their gloves and a bat, whatever it might be. Uh, and they would march downstairs and they would plop down onto the couch, one on either side, to watch the game with dad, uh, dressed appropriately for the sport. Um, uh, it's one of those moments that uh, people often describe as, you know, that's so cute, or that's just darling. Um, uh, guys might say, that's pretty cool. Um, but it, uh, when I read today's gospel, that's what I thought of. Um, because here we have a young son emulating his father and trying to get everyone to know about his father. He's telling the story of his dad. Um, it caused problems for him. 
um, uh, the Hebrews, the Israelites, um, good and bad alike, uh, really never called God the Father. Um, if you were to ask an Israelite, uh, who's the father of the, 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 of the Israelites of the chosen people? They say, well, we are sons of Abraham. We are daughters of Abraham. Um, God was God. Um, father was something they attributed to, to Abraham. But here was Jesus uh, attributing something else to God. That God was not only God, not only the one with whom we're in covenant, he was also his father. Um, and, and we have in these words some of the beginning of, of the revelation of God as Trinity. Um, we're going from one God to one God in two persons. We've got to wait till Pentecost to get to the third one, but, but it's starting here. And it's kind of an appropriate happenstance that we have uh, this reading on, on today. We, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Patrick. Um, we don't know an awful lot about him. But we, we don't know a lot of facts about him. We've got lots of stories about him. We have many legends about him. We don't know when he was born. We don't know when he died, when he died. but it was in the fifth century. Um, some point, born early in it, died late in it. That's about as much as we know about that. Uh, if you were to ask 35 million American Irish or Irish Americans, they'd tell you he was a proud son of Ireland. Um, they'd be wrong. Um, historians look at it and they think it was probably a Scot. Um, but there's a good chance he may have come from England. And there's another group of historians say, you know, no, he was really Welsh. Um, so uh, uh, we can say he was British. Um, he would have said that he was British and he would have said that he was Roman because this was still part of the Roman Empire at the time. Um, uh, apparently his father uh, was probably a deacon and there was a priest somewhere in the family, but uh, Patrick himself wasn't all that religious and he wasn't all that lucky. Um, maybe that's the greatest proof he wasn't Irish. There was no luck of the Irish in him uh, for he was uh, hijacked. Uh, he was taken into slavery uh, by, uh, by Irish slavers. They dragged him back to Ireland where he, uh, he, from the age of 16. For the next six years, he lived the life of a slave, um, working in fields, tending, tending flocks um, under, under a, uh, uh, not just an overseer, but an owner. Uh, he was human chattel. Um, and it was uh, on those nights as a shepherd, um, perhaps he, you know, had heard the nativity story, um, uh, but he started to identify with this, that on the nights that he would be the one keeping guard over the, the sheep, over the flock, um, he started to pray. Uh, maybe it was looking up at the sky and seeing all these stars and wondering whatever it was, he started praying, and that's what what began his, uh, his own uh, conversion experience. Uh, he would talk to God. Sometimes it would seem he would pray all night long, uh, assuming he didn't get interrupted by a wolf or a fox or something, but um, uh, pray through the night. And one night, as he was talking to God, God talked back to him and said, be ready for your liberation is coming. And indeed, the next morning, uh, someone came and, and said, come on, let's go. And they ran away. Uh, they escaped from their owners. Um, and he traveled 200 miles across uh, the island of uh, Ireland. And uh, running into the port, he saw a ship about to set sail and jumped on this thing as it was pulling away from the dock. Uh, made it back. Uh, to Scotland or England or Wales or wherever it was. He made it back to, was back to his family and they were thrilled that their, their son had returned, but um, his return didn't last long. Um, he, uh, uh, he had the feeling that 
God had something in store for him and that it involved Ireland. And so uh, he felt a call to, to priesthood. And so he went to France to, to study for it there and ended up uh, being ordained and working for 20 years, all the while planning a mission to, to Ireland. And finally, he, he got the, the call to, to take uh, six companion priests with him. And they ordained Patrick a bishop and sent him there to convert the Druids. Um, and he spent the rest of his life doing that. Um, uh, what's really great about uh, the story is the, you know, the story everyone uh, remembers. Uh, it, uh, he's one of those early teachers of the Trinity. Um, and uh, the tool that he used to get the idea across of not the whole pantheon of gods and not a forest of them for the Druids, um, but one God who had three persons in him. And when they couldn't get this through their minds, something sacred to the Druids was this uh, little weed plant, a shamrock, and it had three leaves on one stem. This is just this, this one stem has three leaves. There are three persons in one God. Um, he picks up the message that Jesus starts for us today. Uh, so uh, Jesus invites us to, uh, to come to know his father through him and to come to know him through his father. Um, and that's what we celebrate today. That's what we're, we're moving to in this Lent. And uh, not too long after our Easter experience, um, the father and the son will introduce us to the Spirit. Let's bring our needs before our God. Let's pray for the repose of the soul of Karen Lee Buell, Mr. Buell's mother who passed away on Monday evening. Comfort for uh, Mr. Buell and his wife, Mindy, and uh, for Brady and Mac, uh, to alumni of our school and uh, for Gus who's at uh, St. Elizabeth and uh, the rest of the family and all who will mourn her passing, we pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world as to God send his spirit of peace to the minds and hearts of all men and women. For this we pray to the Lord. Pray for our, our own country as to God watch over it and bless it that uh, we may undergo the, the kinds of uh, kind of conversion that Ireland did under St. Patrick and truly become uh, that shining city on a hill that so many have dreamed it to be. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Pray for our own ministry of education here at St. Francis, uh, ministry that carries on Jesus's work who called himself a teacher. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For your intention. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the, the people of Ireland on this feast of their uh their patron um interestingly enough he's also a big deal in haiti uh um so, so for the people of haiti and uh for the millions of irish americans uh, uh who celebrate this, this day we ask for god's blessings we pray to the lord loving god we come before you bringing our hopes and desires the few we've given voice others are held silently in our hearts but all of them we offer to you through your son, Jesus Christ, our brother and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. It is the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, that we come for us the bread of life. <laughs> and blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride and contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Take holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. To be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop Walter, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Karen, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his, May also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Patrick, St. Karen, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. And they praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command is formed by divine teaching. Let's raise our voices in the prayer taught to us by Jesus himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us pray. May your heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, which you bestow as a heavenly remedy on your people and bring judgment to those who receive them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your servants be shielded, O Lord, by the protection of your loving kindness, that doing what is good in this world, they may reach you their highest good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you, God. Thank all of you.